So as part of the Re Inflation Reduction Act, um, there is a provision on lowering the price of prescription drugs. Now, it's still sort of bullshit anyway, though, because it's only a certain number of drugs and it's by a certain date and it's very watered down. Um, it is clearly the impact of pharmaceutical money uh, buying politicians and funding their campaigns. That's what leads us to this point because it's a no-brainer to negotiate for all the pharma prices and reduce um, reduce the price. And they didn't do it now, but they did do something. Mike Lee, Republican senator, is going to talk about this here. And instead of making the ar argument, which he should make, which is the problem here is that not enough drugs are reduced in terms of their price. He doesn't make that point. He makes the opposite point. So here he is on Fox and Friends, and just look at the argument he makes. One of the big parts of this is it will allow Medicare to negotiate lower prescription drug prices. And I, you know, if you are on a fixed income, if you're older, you love that, regardless of your political <coughs> party. You love how it sounds until you read the fine print, Steve. What you see when you read the fine print on this is that at the end of the day, this is going to lead to fewer life-saving and life-enhancing and extending medical cures and treatments. At the end of the day, price controls do not work. They've been tried everywhere. It's like that awful game mousetrap we played when we were kids. It looks fun on the TV commercial. It never, ever works. This one's not going to work. One of the so that was a lie. Everything you just said there is a lie. And um, I think you might know it's a lie. Either that or he's an idiot. Because here's, here's the reality. U.S. tax dollars funded every new pharmaceutical in the last decade. So, he says, oh, you're not, there's not going to be new like research and development as a result of this. U.S. tax dollars funded every new pharmaceutical in the last decade. So, in other words, Mike Lee, you are wrong. Incorrect. Now, are you going to come out and correct yourself? No, you're not. Now, let's talk a little bit about the prices. Prescription drug prices in the U.S. are twice as high. Here's why. A new survey indicates that prescription drug prices in the United States are more than twice as high as, as in other countries. Experts say brand name drugs are the main driver of higher prices. They note that the actual out-of-pocket cost to consumers for a prescription is difficult to gauge due to consumer rebates and price adjustments to insurers. Most people in the United States know that prescription drugs can be expensive. How expensive? Prescription drugs in the United States, on average, cost around 2.5 times more than those same drugs do in other Western countries, according to a new report from the nonprofit, uh, nonpartisan research organization RAND Corporation. Those prices, in fact, have been steadily increasing for a while. The RAND study found that spending on prescription drugs in the United States rose 76% between 2000 and 2017. According to the RAND report, brand name drugs appear to be the primary driver of price disparities in the United States compared to the 32 other nations analyzed in the study. For example, brand name depression drug Abilify costs $34 per pill in the United States compared to less than $5 per pill in Canada. Likewise, asthma drug Flovent costs $781 in the United States compared to $152 in the United Kingdom, Australia, and New Zealand. All told, told countries in the study spend nearly $800 billion on prescription drugs per year, with the United States accounting for 58% of the total, but only 24% of the consumptions. Generic drugs, which account for 84% of all drugs sold in the United States, are actually slightly cheaper here than in other countries on average. But the RAND study shows that they make up only 12% of total pharmaceutical drug spending. Okay, why prices are hard to determine. The true cost of prescription drugs in the United States is difficult to determine. That's because they're enmeshed in a web of pricing adjustments and middle managers from the manufacturer's list price to the actual price a person pays. So... Would you look at that? Middle managers are a problem. That's on only the exact same thing I've been telling you for years on this show. When it comes to uh, health insurance companies, too. They're an unnecessary, rapacious, for-profit middleman that just gets in between you and your doctor. Um, what can be done? Challenging this trend would require large push, a large push against a powerful alliance of financial interests. As one of the largest industries in the U.S., drug manufacturing is using its vast resources to protect the industry from regulatory changes that might negatively decrease the market size, which in turn keeps pressure on the cost of the prescriptions to remain higher than other countries, said Brandon Newman, CEO and co-founder of Zivant, a drug analytics company. 
The conclusion from this reality should encourage fundamental rebate reforms to both fix the cost shifting problems in the U.S. and to develop a more open and reliable net price. There are other levers as well. For instance, Medicare, which currently accounts for nearly a third of all retail pharmaceutical spending, is currently prevented from negotiating drug prices. Some experts say that giving Medicare the ability to negotiate, to negotiate pricing would help drive down costs. Oh, look at that. So in other words, the exact solutions that the left have been talking about are the solutions. Look, the far left position is like, just nationalize the entire pharmaceutical industry. If, if, if tax dollars fund the creation of new drugs anyway, why not just nationalize the whole industry? You could sell it, you know, at cost effectively or have tax dollars fund it. it why not do that? That's one um, perspective. Another perspective is basically like a public option for pharma drugs. You know, it's sort of what Gavin Newsom is now trying in California, where California is going to produce their own insulin and going to be able to sell it for next to nothing compared to what insulin is sold for by the pharmaceutical companies. That's another thing you could do. Or you could just allow negotiation to lower the price. Let the federal government negotiate to lower the price, in which case we'd be better off. This jackass, Mike Lee, says, no, all of those things are bad. All of those things are wrong. Just let them keep ripping us off. And that's my solution. So higher drug prices is your solution? That's not a solution. That's a problem. So it's it's amazing the shit people get away with saying in the United States. And, you know, I just gave you a crash course on exactly what's going on with our pharmaceutical industry. And he either doesn't know any of this stuff or doesn't care because people should check where his money comes from. I'm sure he gets some from Big Pharma. And if he doesn't, then he's just, God, he's just a fucking useless bobblehead regurgitating industry talking points and not even realizing he's doing it. Hey y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop and watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.